Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Corporate Governance Awards 2020. Please welcome to your screens, Corporate Secretary's Editor-at-Large, Ben Maiden. Hello everyone, welcome to the 13th Annual Corporate Governance Awards from Corporate Secretary. I hope everyone out there watching is excited for what this year promises to be a ceremony that's a little different, but also entertaining and informative. Of course, sadly, the pandemic means that we're unable to gather in the same room for fine food and drinks as we would normally, but I'm delighted that through the magic of technology, we're still able to gather virtually. I, for example, join you from beautiful Brooklyn, and I know there are people around the country tuning in. I hope you're all able to raise a glass or two to salute yourselves and your colleagues, get dressed up and enjoy some positivity after what has been an enormously challenging year for everybody because nothing has changed in what the awards are for, celebrating the achievements of the governance, risk and compliance community. Last year, we met at Broadway's Canyon of Heroes, the traditional route of ticker tape parades honoring victors ranging from soldiers to soccer players. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, we've seen many heroes. First and foremost, the medical staff and essential workers putting their lives on the line to protect our health and to enable some sense of normal life to continue. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that governance teams have been essential in helping companies continue operating and serving their investors and other stakeholders. The submissions for this year's awards make very clear what amazing work the community has done in areas ranging from shareholder engagement and virtual AGMs to entity management, ESG reporting, ethics, compliance and proxy statements. Every nominee, whether they win or not, should be very proud of their achievements. You have all been a credit to your companies and the, and the profession. I'd like to thank everyone who created and submitted nominations. I'd also like to extend a special thanks to the judges who devote a great deal of time and thought to analyzing entries and choosing the winners. Their expertise and insight are invaluable. Like everyone else, this has been a challenging uh, year of uncertainty and change for corporate secretary. And we are truly delighted and honored that to have seen your continued support. It would not be possible to host our events without the support of our sponsors and partners and without you, the audience. It has been great encouraging that even through these tough months when everyone has been working so hard, larger numbers of people than ever have been reading our articles and tuning in for our webinars and virtual conferences. It's a sign not only of the governance community's focus on topics that impact their work, it also points to and helps promote a continued sense of community, even while we're operating from remote locations. We feel honored that you continue to take part in these events. Thank you so much for doing so and for being with us today for the awards. And thank you again to our sponsors and partners. Well, enough from me. I hope you enjoy the show and celebrate our winners. I'd like to now hand over to Stacey Roberts, Assistant Vice President of Corporate Governance at Chesapeake Utilities Corporation. Over to you, Stacey, and cheers, everybody. Good afternoon to all of our friends and colleagues. It is wonderful to be with you this afternoon. We hope you and your families are all safe and doing well. It is an honor this afternoon to welcome you to the Corporate Secretary's inaugural virtual 2020 Corporate Governance Awards. This afternoon, we gather together to celebrate and honor excellence across industries and teams. We join together in our navigation of the evolving landscape, progression of social justice, advancement of equity, diversity, and inclusion, development of ESG, and leadership of new opportunities that will shape our future. We congratulate all of you for your dedication and vision and collective contributions to our bright future. Our Master of Ceremonies this afternoon is Laurie Havelock. Laurie is a writer for several notable publications. His work can be found in Bloomberg, a global media information and network source, IR Magazine, which brings together a global group of investor relations professionals, Responsible Investor, a news source that provides information on global developments in responsible investments. Mindshare, one of the world's largest media agencies spanning across 86 countries, 
and NewsVend, an organization that helps to build unique online content focused on the customer experience. Lori's work has included commentary on environmental, social, and governance matters, responsible investing practices, and commercial financing. Lori has been the host of several think tank sessions, discussion panels, and webinars, and has interviewed notable leaders in the financial industry. Lori is also the producer of a podcast and serves as a radio talk show host. Please join me this afternoon in welcoming Lori as our Master of Ceremonies. Hello. Well, thank you for that very kind introduction. And before I say anything else, I'd love to give a huge thank you to Chesapeake for being today's MC partner. And now with that out of the way, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. As I'm sure you've just heard, my name is Laurie Havelock. I'm delighted to be your host at Corporate Secretary's very first ever virtual Corporate Governance Awards. We're sorry, of course, that we aren't together at the Shipriani this year, enjoying an evening of delicious food and wine, as we always do in, uh, in these times. But of course, the uh, 2020 landscape is a bit different, and the Corporate Secretary team have done their very best to bring the in-person award ceremony to you virtually today. And we hope you enjoy all that's to come and still make as much uh, happy memories as you would do in person. Before we get started with the show proper, on behalf of Corporate Secretary, I'd like to once more thank everybody who submitted a nomination this year for an award, from the companies that self-nominated to the outside council, industry supporters and advisors who submitted nominations on their behalf. We greatly appreciate your efforts and we really wouldn't be able to put forward such an impressive stable of companies, of individuals, of, of real best-in-class efforts without them. We received, in fact, this year, a record number of entries. We had over 150 being put forward by you all. So together, your participation really helped round out this afternoon's lineup of shortlisted companies and ensure that we could pick the very best of the very best to win an award. And we wouldn't have our shortlist and those eventual winners without our panel of esteemed judges either, made up this year of CGA veterans and a few new faces to add to the mix too. Our judges were once again armed with the, uh, the formidable weapons in any award judges arsenal, of course, tally sheets, PowerPoint presentations, reports, notes, probably a couple of cups of coffee and, I don't know, maybe even when times were tough, something stronger as they convened to decide this year's winners. And please, would you join me in recognising all of the judges and thanking them for taking the time out of their incredibly busy schedules to make all of this happen and using their their esteemed uh, experience to make sure they're making incredibly adept decisions. Our thanks go to Douglas Chia, the president of Soundboard Governance and fellow of the Rutgers Centre for Corporate Law and Governance. Lucy Fato, executive vice president and general counsel of AIG. Matt Geeky, the senior vice president, secretary and general counsel of Graybar Electric Company. Eileen Kemmerich, CEO of the Governance Partners. Catherine Kilbane, retired Senior Vice President, Secretary and General Counsel at the Sherwin-Williams Company, Lead Director at the Ambersons and a member of the Cleveland Clinic Board, Carol Strickland, Director of Trireme Energy Holdings and a member of its Nominating and Remuneration Committee, and last but of course by no means least, Paul Washington, Executive Director of the Conference Board ESG Centre. What a lineup that would be something close to, I think, if we were talking in, in soccer terms, an all star cast. Please join me in giving them a virtual round of applause. Thank you so much. And rest assured, any judges from one of our nominated companies were, of course, excluded from reviewing the categories where their own company appeared. No sneaky self votes for us tonight. So on to today's ceremony proper. There are 17 awards to present and I'm just going to take you through how things are going to work for all of those. I'm going to announce each category and introduce the award partner who will then go on to read out the nominee names and of course finally announce the much anticipated winner who will be walking home with a corporate governance award. In an effort to keep the element of surprise going just that little bit longer this evening, Corporate Secretary has asked all nominees to submit an acceptance speech video ahead of today's award ceremony. So once once the winner has been revealed, the corresponding acceptance speech will be played out on your screens. Not even the winners themselves will know which one is coming. So do keep an eye out as it could be yours at any time. 
And once again, as we sadly aren't able to wine and dine this year's winners at the Shiprani, uh, Corporate Secretary will instead be mailing winners their well-earned trophy, plus a box of special gifts and goodies from our awards partners. So with all of that said and done, there are a list of people we really must say thank you to tonight for helping make this event possible. Of course, there's the team at the Corporate Secretary who have been working uh, hard behind the scenes to make sure everything goes off without a hitch. And then of course, today's partners without whom this virtual event really wouldn't have got off the ground at all. A special thanks goes to the MC partner as mentioned at the top, Chesapeake uh, for their introduction at the beginning of the show, very kind of them to do so. A huge thank you goes to our official champagne partner, Mauro Sadali who have provided a special bottle of champagne for our winner's gift boxes. And finally, thank you to our photo booth partner, the Nouveau Group, uh, which actually leads me on to the final thing I wanted to talk to you all about before we get started. To add a bit of fun to the show, to celebrate a bit of that, you know, that in-person uh, specialness that we're all missing this, this evening, we're asking you to tweet a photo to show everyone exactly how you are celebrating. Uh, there will be prizes given for the best dressed viewer. Interpret that as you will. So get tweeting using the hashtag CGA2020. Uh, if Twitter really isn't your thing and perhaps you've got a, a chief exec who you need to keep off the Twitter after a couple of glasses of that champagne, uh, then you can email your photos instead to the address being shown in the chat box just about now. We will be showcasing your photos throughout the event and will announce the winner at the end of the show so make sure you stick around to find out if you've won and get snapping so without further ado let's get on with the corporate governance awards so kicking off today's proceedings we're first looking at the award for best agm which is presented by our partners lumi this was a new category for 2020, and the panel of judges looked for evidence of the work that met the governance needs of both the company and shareholders in preparing for and running annual meetings, whether they be virtual, hybrid, or in person. It's funny that, of course, we introduced this year the award for uh, the best AGM, uh, and who can even remember what an in-person event is like? Do they still exist? Well, you're going to see some best-in-class examples nonetheless. I'm now going to hand over to Simon Bryan, Managing Director of Lumi, who's going to tell us a little bit more about the nominees and, of course, announce today's very first winner. Simon, over to you. Hi there, everyone. Um, very happy to now announce the winners of the best annual meeting. Um, the golden envelope has arrived via drone so i will now open that and uh, announce the candidates and, and the winners so the candidates are in alphabetical order american international group blackrock hewlett packard enterprise hp and ibm and the winner hp congratulations to the team here. Hello everyone. Making the short list for best AGM this year was a real honor. Winning the award is the perfect way to end the year. Stating the obvious, 2020 has been difficult for everyone. We have all had to adapt in not only our working environments, but also our home lives. Even today, my family had a very long and very hard laugh as, as to why I would wear a jacket and tie as I walked in to do this video. For our AGM, COVID-19 and the restrictions in California created a new set of challenges, but we were also dealing with a pending proxy fight. In the end, the team pivoted quickly in dealing with each one of these new facts, and I couldn't be any more proud of what we accomplished. We had one focus, get it done right for HP and our shareholders. I am honored to accept this award on behalf of the team at HP. This includes former colleagues who have moved on to new positions and are dearly missed. I also want to thank our partners and advisors. This couldn't have been done without them. This includes Wachtell, Gibson Dunn, PJT Camberview, Broadridge, EY, Argyle, Innisfree, Summit Partners, and First Coast Results. Thank you for your continued support and partnership. Last but definitely not least, I want to thank Corporate Secretary and all of the people who make up this fantastic community. Thank you for setting the bar consistently so high and for pushing me to learn new and more innovative ways to get things done. Connecting with each of you is an essential part of why I enjoy doing what I do. Be well, everyone. 
and I look forward to connecting with each of you in 2021. Thank you again. A hearty congratulations to today's very first winner, HP. And thank you to Patrick for putting on a suit and a tie just for us. I feel your, your pain and your, the, the shame I feel with the people that live with me as well. They often uh, slightly askance when I turn up in a bow tie in the middle of the afternoon. But of course, it's all worth it for the Corporate Governance Awards. On to the next category today, which is for the Best Compliance and Ethics Program, which is presented by our partners AIG. This category looked at the coordination of governance, compliance, ethics and risk management processes across the entire corporation, including all subsidiaries. We'll firstly turn to look at those nominees from small to mid cap firms and announcing the results is AIG's EVP and general counsel, Lucy Fato, who also notably was one of today's judges. So Lucy, please do the honours of telling us who has won this award. The nominees for Best Compliance and Ethics Program, Small to Mid Cap, are Atlas Air Worldwide, Change Healthcare, Core Mining, and Manpower Group. And the winner is Change Healthcare. Congratulations. On behalf of the 14,000 employees of Change Healthcare, I am thrilled to accept this year's Corporate Secretary Award for Best Compliance and Ethics Program. At Change Healthcare, our employees strive to do the right thing, the right way, every day. And this year, more than ever, we're so very proud to be part of the healthcare industry, helping our 30,000 customers across the globe deliver critical healthcare services. Compliance and ethics are paramount at Change Healthcare. We take great pride in creating new ways to accelerate our compliance journey, and we appreciate so much Corporate Secretary for recognizing our efforts. I especially want to thank our 140 legal and compliance professionals. Every day you strive to make complex healthcare laws and regulations not only understandable, but also meaningful and actionable. I also want to recognize our board of directors, the innovative compliance and audit committees of our board, and our very engaged executive team for their unwavering leadership and support. And finally, and most importantly, I want to thank all of our employees worldwide who tirelessly work to make our vision of inspiring a better healthcare system a reality. Without you, compliance and ethics would be nothing more than three words on a piece of paper. Again, my thanks for making compliance and ethics come alive as part of our leadership DNA at Change Healthcare. Let's continue to do the right thing, the right way, every day. Well, a big well done to Loretta there for really raising the bar high on the second award today, not only in terms of a fantastic acceptance speech, but also for really bringing the glitz and glamour to this afternoon's awards. Uh, well done to you and the Change Healthcare team on that well-deserved win, and well done, Loretta, for being probably the first name on the list already for the Best Dressed Award later on. We'll stay with the award for now for Best Compliance and Ethics Programme, and we'll turn to look at those companies from large cap organisations this award is brought to you by our partner at Board Book It, and doing the honours on their behalf is their Director of Sales, Lara Huber. Over to you, Lara. Board Book It is pleased to announce the nominees for the Best Compliance and Ethics Program, Large Cap. The nominees are 3M, Avangrid, Marsha McLennan Companies, the Allstate Corporation, and Visa. And the winner is Visa. Congratulations, Visa. Corporate Secretary, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it's my honor and privilege to accept the 2020 Corporate Governance Award for Best Compliance and Ethics Program on behalf of Visa Inc. My name is Obi Matabuko, and I'm Visa's Chief Compliance Officer. Over this past year of unprecedented change, our compliance professionals teamed up with our senior business leaders and other control functions to not only proactively manage our core and emerging compliance risks, but to also further enhance and, and develop Visa's strong ethical culture. 
There are a number of ways in which we do that. I'll just share a few with you here today. First, we use compliance dashboards that track and identify our key risks in our different business lines and in different markets. We provide quarterly updates to not only our corporate risk committee, but as well as our board audit and risk committee um, so that they have key insights into various types of risks that these are the faces in our business, whether they're market risks, strategic, legal, regulatory, or other risks. Second, we use those, uh, the framework that we've set up that goes across functions, audit, risk, compliance, legal, as well as our business, to provide a rigorous framework that sets our, our risk appetite in our control environment. And we provide regional scorecards that we hold our business leaders accountable to for how they perform given those frameworks. We also use technology in our function, not only to measure the effectiveness of our program by various metrics, but also we have a dedicated technology team within compliance whose job is to make sure as we're designing new products and services, as we're looking through our existing businesses, that technology is being implemented in helping us to be more effective and efficient. And then finally, I'm very proud to be associated and recognized to be part of a compliance and ethics program that is part of a company that has shown strong ethical leadership in the face of injustices, racial, social injustice, and Visa as a company has taken a strong stance to pledge $10 million in scholarships to Black and African American college-bound high school students with a promise of guaranteed employment at Visa upon their graduation from college. We've also done the hard work to look within. We've held employment forums that have been hosted by our senior business leaders, tackling issues to educate and discuss issues such as institutionalized racism, as well as looking within to further diversify our workforce. Visa has committed to increase our underrepresented minorities by 50% in our executive ranks over the next three years and 50% in Visa's overall population over the next five years. So it is with sincere gratitude that on behalf of everyone at Visa, we thank you for this award. A very well done to the team at Visa. Well done on that one. On to the next award category, which is for the best ESG reporting and is presented by Okapi Partners. ESG in 2020, of course, remains at the forefront of everybody's minds. I think the, the kind of current global situation has really solidified that for a lot of companies and investors. Uh, this category has asked nominees to outline the quality and robustness of their ESG related reporting. Shareholders, of course, want accuracy, uh, they want materiality well accounted for, and comparability in ESG disclosures. And corporates, on the other hand, have to make many choices and overcome many hurdles to meet these demands. And those shortlisted in this afternoon's uh, category have done just that. So to tell us who the successful nominees are, I'm delighted to hand over to a Capi Partners President and CEO, Bruce Goldfarb. Please take it away, Bruce. Greetings. I'm Bruce Goldfarb taking a break from a busy day here at Okapi Partners where I'm the president and CEO. And it is my honor to present the award for best ESG reporting. The nominees are, to open the envelope to find out who they actually are, sorry. AT&T, IBM, PepsiCo, the Allstate Corporation, the Travelers Company, and before I announce the winner, I should pour a little toast or a little beverage for a toast to them. And the winner is, ah, looks like I poured the wrong beverage for this winner. The winner is Pepsi. It's a Pepsi. It's an honor to accept this award on behalf of PepsiCo. Strong corporate governance is deeply embedded across the fabric of our organization. From our board of directors to our senior management team, to my terrific team in the corporate governance group, and most importantly, in the work of our associates who are out in the markets, 
making, moving, and selling our products in over 200 countries and territories every single day. This year, more than ever, we've seen that strong corporate governance can make a difference to our employees, to our shareholders, to our customers, and most importantly, to our communities. Thank you to Corporate Secretary Magazine for organizing this event and for recognizing our work. Congratulations to PepsiCo on that win. So the next award now for the best global entity management. This award was another newbie for 2020 and looks at the work in creating and running effective and innovative global entity management programs that ensure the organization in question remained in compliance with all the local laws. I'm going to hand over to our award partner who's going to read out the nominees and of course tell us all who has won this award. Board Book it is pleased to present the award for Best Global Entity Management. And the nominees are Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Marsh and McLennan Companies, The Boeing Company. And the winner is Marsh and McLennan Companies. Congratulations. It is such an honor to accept the first ever award for Best Global Entity Management. So although it's often overlooked, legal entity management is the cornerstone of good governance and compliance for every organization. It is also essential for important business decisions and transactions, proving that good governance is not just an abstract and philosophical goal, but it is an important driver of growth for our companies. This award goes for our amazing and dedicated team at Marshall McLennan, especially Siobhan Hornsey and Rebecca Andrews Brannock, who have built our management system from the ground up and never stop on their journey to create a management structure that provides one source of truth for our organization. And finally, thank you to Corporate Secretary Magazine for shining a light on this important work. And on to award number six, which is for the best governance by a cross-listed company. This is proudly presented by our friends at Diligent. Uh, and this category is a little different to the rest as it's one of our editors pick awards. The editors of Corporate Secretary were looking for evidence here of the best overall governance, compliance and ethics program by a team at a company who shares a listed both in the US and on a non US exchange. So a lot of responsibilities to juggle there. I'm delighted now to hand over and hand over my responsibilities for this award to Diligence Vice President of Sales, Scott Mallory, who's going to do the honors. Hi, I'm Scott Mallory with Diligent Corporation, where Diligent is the pioneer of modern governance. Our industry-leading suite of solutions are changing how work gets done for governance professionals and board members globally. We now have 17,000 customers worldwide and just north of over 700,000 users. Our platform empowers leaders to turn effective governance into a competitive advantage. And now I have the privilege to present the award for best governance by a cross-listed company. The nominees are RBC and TD Bank Group. And the winner is RBC. Congratulations to the RBC team on the win. Cheers to you. Congratulations again. Royal Bank of Canada is proud to accept the Best Governance by a Cross-Listed Company Award. 2020 has presented several challenges and opportunities for RBC with the rise of the global pandemic, economic shifts, and a new virtual reality. The COVID-19 crisis has proven how maintaining the highest standards of good governance is an essential foundation for strong performance and fundamental to RBC's success. It gave us an opportunity to test and confirm the soundness and resilience of our governance structure, which establishes the relationships among the board, its committees, management, shareholders, and other stakeholders. And more than ever, robust communication between the board and management has been key to enabling the board to provide sound oversight and pivot quickly to support management through the challenging crisis. As we continue to navigate these uncharted waters, we will keep upholding high standards of governance that are consistent with regulatory expectations and evolving best practices. We wish to congratulate award nominee TD Bank and to thank Corporate Secretary Magazine for taking on the challenge 
of organizing this first ever virtual award ceremony. Thank you and have a good evening. Well done to this afternoon's winners so far. Uh, now feels like a good time to take a few minutes just before we move on to the next bevy of award nominees and winners. So please take this opportunity to top up your glasses with something, well, whatever's appropriate for this time in the afternoon. It's an awards. You can be the judge of that. And of course, snap a photo for the best dressed viewer competition. Get those tweeting away using the hashtag CGA2020 or the email address if you prefer. Um, you can email the photos to the address as being shown in the chat box right about now. Uh, but in the meantime, stay tuned and we will be right back with the rest of the Corporate Governance Awards. Charged, and of course, I hope your glasses are recharged too. We are ready to move on with the next set of awards. These are all the best proxy statement awards and for which Donnelly Financial Solutions are today's award partners. And traditionally, these are our most popular awards category and this year was no different whatsoever. Uh, and probably down to the fact that this award examines one of the most important cornerstones of a, of a company's outward communications. We really are looking at the completeness of legal disclosures here, the effectiveness of communication elements, the readability, the timeliness of filing, the visual design elements, which of course are becoming so much more important in a web first kind of environment and the overall layout when it comes to proxy statements. So first we're going to turn to the nominees from small cap organizations in this category. I'm going to hand over to DFIN's Director of Corporate Governance Services, Ron Schneider, who's going to do the honors. Ron, please take to the, I almost said stage, take to the screen. Hello, I'm Ron Schneider, Director of Corporate Governance Services at Donnelly Financial Solutions, also known as DFIN. 
It's good to join you in this virtual edition of the Corporate Governance Awards. But to be honest, it'll be a lot greater when we can all return to the amazing in-person live events. But this is what we have to do for now. Donnelly Financial Solutions is a leader in risk and compliance solutions, providing insightful technology, industry expertise, and data insights to clients across the globe. Our governance and compliance group assists over one third of all North American listed companies with their proxies, annual reports, sustainability reports, and other communications. This is why we are proud to sponsor the best proxy statement award across the small, mid and large cap categories. Best proxy statement generally receives many nominations, making it a very hotly contested category. So being named a finalist is, in my view, a victory. You're all being recognized for your great work, setting the bar for providing investors and others with clear, digestible, useful information and inspiring other companies to do the same. It is my pleasure on behalf of Donnelly Financial Solutions to announce the winners. But first, the finalists are At Home Group, Atlas Air Worldwide, Columbus McKinnon Corporation, ELF Beauty, and financial institutions. And the winner is At Home Group. Congratulations to At Home Group and to the finals. On behalf of At Home and our board and executive leadership team, and particularly on behalf of our general counsel, Mary Jane Broussard, who so passionately leads At Home in its commitment to governance and ethics and compliance, I am honored to accept this award for best proxy statement. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate and recognize the collaborative efforts of everyone on the at-home finance, investor relations, and HR teams who, as always, lended their support to our proxy and governance efforts as a company. I would also like to thank our partners in preparing our proxy, Shannon Otwell and his design and printing teams at Token Merrill, as well as our proxy solicitation partner, Jeff Weinberg, and his team at DF King. Most notably, I want to give thanks and full credit to our talented partners and friends at Honigman Law Firm. Mike Ben and Meredith Irvine co-lead Honigman's Securities and Corporate Governance Practice Group. It is because of their deep expertise and innovative guidance that our proxy has been transformed to be worthy of this distinction. Thank you all. And congratulations to Meredith and all the team there. Next up is the Best Proxy Statement Award for nominees in a mid-cap organization. I'm delighted to hand back over to Ron Schneider of DFIN, who once again will announce the nominees and reveal the winner as he did so well just now. Back to you, Ron. It is my pleasure to announce the winner of the Best Proxy Statement mid-cap category. And the finalists are Allegheny Technologies, Core Mining, KBR, Corn Ferry, and Six Flags Entertainment Corporation. And the winner is Core Mining. Congratulations to Core Mining and to the other finalists. Hi, I'm Brian Slade, Senior Manager and Legal Counsel at Core Mining. I'm honored to accept this award on behalf of Core and my colleagues who collaborated and contributed to the drafting of our proxy statement this year. Our proxy statement is an important disclosure and communications tool. Like many companies, we work hard each year to provide content that our investors are focused on, like human capital management, health and safety, corporate governance, and environmental impact. I would like to recognize and congratulate our multidisciplinary team for their hard work um, to produce such a high quality work product. It is truly a team effort and a great group to work with. I would also like to thank Corporate Secretary Magazine and the panel of judges for this award. Finally, I recognize and congratulate the other finalists who were nominated. It is an honor to be considered among an esteemed group like this. Thank you. And thank you, Brian, and uh, well done in return to you and all the team. The last of the best proxy statement categories is for large cap companies. For the final time, I'll turn to, he's probably more familiar to you than me at this point, DFIN's Ron Schneider, to reveal the results. Ron, take it away. It is now my pleasure to announce the winner of the heavyweight category, or large cap category, best proxy statement. And the finalists are Bank of America, Health Peak Properties, 
NASDAQ, Prudential Financial, and the Allstate Corporation. And the winner is NASDAQ. Congratulations to NASDAQ and to the other finalists. Good evening, and thank you for attending the 2020 Virtual Corporate Secretary Award Ceremony. I'd like to begin with a big thank you and a round of applause to Corporate Secretary Magazine for hosting these awards during unprecedented times, for the judges and their important role in reviewing all of the nominated proxies, for sponsors of this year's virtual event, and last but not least, a big thank you to Mike Taylor, Estrella Miller, and the entire Donnelly Financial Services team who submitted our nomination. At NASDAQ, driving exemplary corporate governance is part of our DNA. Our advocacy work and role with our listed companies, as well as our important co corporate governance solution business, puts us at the forefront of many conversations with listed companies on the content of their proxy and their corporate governance. We're passionate about leading by example for all issuers. We're also driven to help directors, corporate secretaries, general counsels, and executives to drive excellence in corporate governance at their companies. Our NASDAQ annual proxy and its growing content is focused on telling our NASDAQ story. It includes important disclosures, but also corporate governance excellence. It's designed with intention not only to be useful during the annual meeting season, but also throughout the year. We'd also like to thank our internal team, starting with our board of directors, our CEO, Adina Friedman, and our general counsel, John Zecca, who truly set a tone at the top to encourage us to embrace good corporate governance and an excellent proxy statement. We'd also like to thank the internal team, comprised of many individuals who work with us on the annual meeting and proxy statement. It's too many to name here, but we'd like to give a special shout out to our design team, who, among other things, designed original artwork for the cover of this year's proxy statement. Finally, I'd like to thank our long-term corporate secretary, Joan Conley, who is retiring at the end of the year and who has been for many years the driving force behind all of our governance programs and the excellent content of our proxy statements. And we all owe her an enormous debt of gratitude. Well, thank you, Erica. I know that as the Corporate Secretary of NASDAQ, you will take this role and lead it beautifully into the future and continue to be an example of great corporate governance for all of our listed companies, as well as tell the NASDAQ story. So thank you for this esteemed award on behalf of NASDAQ, the organization, our NASDAQ Board of Directors, our CEO, Adina Friedman, John Zeck, our General Counsel, and our entire executive leadership team and importantly, our annual meeting team members. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Joan and Erica, and another entry on the best dress list. I think a great acceptance speech and impressive branded masks. That's really a, maybe that should be an award we do next year, the best PPE, maybe not. We'll take now a look at the category for best shareholder engagement, which is presented by our partners, Innisfree M&A Incorporated. Engaging in dialogue with shareholders around governance issues has taken on a whole new importance in the era of say on pay. And this category, which was first introduced back in 2014, focused on the ways that companies are reaching out to proxy decision makers, often outside of proxy season, to discuss their compensation strategy and other aspects of corporate governance. The companies leading the way in this category are thinking creatively about getting to know what shareholders want and giving them access, of course, to the board. I'm pleased to hand over to Larry Miller, Managing Director of Innisfree M&A Incorporated, who will announce the list of nominees and, of course, reveal this year's winner of the Best Shareholder Engagement Award. Larry, please, over to you. Innisfree is pleased to participate in the 2020 Corporate Governance Awards, if only virtually. We will be presenting the award for Best Shareholder Engagement. The nominees for that award are American International Group, Bank of America, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, IBM, and Nuance Communications. And this year's award goes to Bank of America. Congratulations. Thank you to Corporate Secretary Magazine for sponsoring these awards and congratulations to all the nominees recognized this year. 
At Bank of America, we live our purpose to help make financial lives better through the power of every connection. We do this each day by asking our clients and teammates, what would you like the power to do? For several years, we have maintained a year-round shareholder engagement process. We're committed to having our board's lead independent director meet with each of our top 250 investors that requests a meeting, over 50 meetings a year. Our senior management is fully invested in our process and actively participate in engagement meetings. And my team, led by Gail Chang, is continually thinking of ways to enhance our communications and transparency. So we answer our question, what would you like the power to do? By having the power to be creative, be transparent, and communicate our story to investors and stakeholders with clarity, accuracy, and understanding. I accept the award for best shareholder engagement on behalf of our board of directors, our CEO Brian Moynihan and management team, and the many people at Bank of America that contribute to our shareholder engagement process, including our human resources, ESG, investor relations, finance, and legal teams. I wish to give special thanks to Jack Bovender, our board's lead independent director, who will be retiring from our board in 2021 for his tireless efforts over the past six years in several hundred investor meetings. I also wish to thank our partners at PJT Camberview, Georgeson, and Moro Saldali for their counsel and guidance. Thank you and congratulations. Congratulations to Bank of America and all the team there. Up next is the award for best use of technology, which is sponsored by our partners at NASDAQ. And the use of technology, of course, is becoming an integral way of the way corporate secretaries and other governance professionals communicate with their colleagues and with investors. It seems only right in 2020 that we really recognize this award in this new world where everything we're doing, this included, is conducted digitally. Our nominees were asked to show how their use of new technological tools, social media and the internet has helped to advance governance within their firm. So to tell us a bit more about this award, the nominees and the winners included, I'll hand over to Nelson Griggs, president of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Nelson, over to you. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Nelson Griggs, president of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. I oversee corporate services at NASDAQ which includes our NASDAQ's governance solutions and the NASDAQ Center for Board Excellence, our teams that provide strategic value to governance professionals worldwide. I really hope that everyone tuning in tonight for this event is safe and healthy and they've been able to successfully navigate what has been a very challenging environment this year. I also want to thank Corporate Secretary Magazine for hosting this event in a virtual format. They continue to be great stewards to the governance community serving practitioners around the world with the latest industry insights. From NASDAQ's perspective, we know that governance has been a major focus in the corporate world amidst the backdrop of the global pandemic. From board composition and diversity to new governance technologies, you've all had to adapt to today's new normal while maintaining your cadence of governance responsibilities. And through the use of governance technologies, You've shifted seamlessly to virtual board and shareholder meetings while still driving impactful change for your respective organizations and stakeholders. Now that brings us to our next award category, one that is near and dear to NASDAQ for a number of reasons and even more so for today's virtual environment. So this year's nominees for best use of technology are 3M, Hewlett Packard Enterprises, Marsh McLennan Companies, the Allstate Corporation, and Visa. And the award goes to Hewlett Packard Enterprises. Congratulations to the team at Hewlett Packard. From your friends at NASDAQ, we wish you all the best for the remaining year. And please enjoy the rest of the evening. Hello, I'm Derek Windham with Hewlett Packard Enterprise. At HPE, we believe in being a force for good, in solving for humanity, with humanity, and in using technology to make the world better. We have focused on transforming our governance practices by incorporating technological innovations to broaden our shareholder outreach and enhance stakeholder engagement experience, enable greater connectivity, collaboration, and inclusion among our teams, and facilitate insights on progress on our key ESG initiatives. Whether by building technologies in-house 
or leveraging technological tools provided by our governance partners, we continually strive to adapt, innovate, and accelerate in furtherance of our purpose to serve as a force for good. A big thank you to my team, to HPE, to IR Magazine and Corporate Secretary, and to all of you here today as we work towards our common goal of principled ethical governance. Thank you. Well done to Derek and all of the team at HPE too. Well, we've had some great wins and acceptance speeches and not to mention some of the sartorial choices so far this afternoon already. And there are just six more awards to go. So we're gonna take one more short break. We advise you to top up your glasses once more if possible, make yourselves comfortable and we'll be right back in a minute or so. comfortable we're ready to move on to the final set of categories of this afternoon's awards so first up we're going to take a look at the rising star award which is presented by onboard board management this category encourages nominees from newcomers to a governance or compliance role to put their names in the hat and nominees of this award in the past have worked in the profession for a short period of time and are showing evidence of achieving demonstrable success in driving good governments, implementing change at their company and making a significant contribution to the governance community at large. So, you know, not a, a short list of achievements already, even if they're early on in their careers. I'm delighted to hand over to Paul Lockhart, the Vice President of Sales at Onboard Board Management, to not only announce the nominees, but also reveal who has won the Rising Star Award. So, Paul, please do the honours. Hello, my name is Paul Lockhart. I'm Vice President of Sales, Onboard Board Management. Today, it's my pleasure to present the award of Rising Star. And our nominees are 
Elizabeth Rieta, Oven Grid. John White, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And Stephen Chen, Zendesk. And the winner is John White, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Congratulations, John. Hi. My name is John White, Corporate and Securities Counsel for Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I am ecstatic to hear that I've won the award for Corporate Governance Rising Star. First, a heartfelt thank you to Corporate Secretary for acknowledging the incredible work of governance teams around the world and to everyone who's participated in today's ceremony. I feel truly honored to have my work recognized since, like all of us here, we devote so much of our life to this. However, it takes a dedicated group to properly implement and maintain industry-leading governance standards. So I'd like to thank my team for the fantastic innovation, collaboration, and oversight that I see happen every single day. So thank you to David, Linda, Karen, Jackie, Irene, Zan, and a very special thanks to my manager and our fearless leader, Derek Windham, for his incredible mentorship. Finally, I wanted to take a brief moment to remember why we do what we do. As champions of good governance, we help organizations run properly. But let's not forget that these organizations are made up of and serve people. Especially with ESG being front and center in the minds of many shareholders, I hope that we can all do our part to build governance structures that can promote meaningful engagement on topics ranging from inclusion and diversity to climate change. Although it can be gradual at times, our jobs truly have the potential to make the world a better place. And I hope I've inspired some of you this evening. Thank you again. Congratulations to everyone on their nominations and have a good night. Congratulations to John for that very special win and what an achievement to be recognized by the judges as this year's rising star. We can't wait to see what you get up to soon, John. Do keep in touch with corporate secretary and from rising star to lifetime achievement it's only fitting that we also recognize and honor the career achievements of our most respected members of the corporate governance community so this very special award is decided on by the editors of corporate secretary with of course input from our panel of judges and based on the feedback and suggestions from the community at large here to introduce the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award winner, we welcome back to our screens Lucy Fato, the EVP and General Counsel of AIG. Lucy, please tell us who's won this special award. This year's winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award is... Joan Conley Nasdaq. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Adina Friedman, President and CEO of NASDAQ. It is my honor to congratulate my colleague and friend, Joan Conley, on receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award at this year's Corporate Governance Awards, presented by Corporate Secretary Magazine. The award embodies the wise counsel, principled approach, and creative thinking that Joan has become renowned for at NASDAQ. Throughout her career, Joan has been a corporate governance pace setter, trendsetter, and groundbreaker. The impact that she has had during her tenure at NASDAQ has truly made us a better company, and she has worked tirelessly to support not just our clients, but the entire corporate governance community. Having served NASDAQ and our predecessor organization, the NASD, for a combined 34 years, Joan has been a critical member of our senior management team and a key governance resource for our global workforce. From overseeing NASDAQ's corporate governance and global ethics compliance programs, to helping NASDAQ establish the Educational Foundation, to mentoring so many employees by championing our women's and veterans employee networks, Joan has consistently led by example. Her commitment to exceptional corporate governance practices, contributions to NASDAQ's corporate governance framework, and award-winning proxy serve as an inspiration within the company and the industry. Joan. On behalf of myself and all of our colleagues at NASDAQ, congratulations on this incredible recognition. We thank you for your many years of service and dedication to making our mission, vision, and values come true every day. My name is Nelson Griggs, president of the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. On behalf of the NASDAQ family, I want to give a special congratulations to this year's lifetime achievement winner, our Joan Connolly, corporate secretary at NASDAQ. 
I have been so fortunate to work closely with Joan for many years and want to recognize the impact she has made not only at NASDAQ, but for the broader corporate governance community. Throughout her tenure, Joan has had the unique distinction of serving every NASDAQ CEO since the inception of our company. She is also responsible for overseeing NASDAQ's corporate governance and global ethics and compliance programs and creating NASDAQ's corporate governance framework that serves as a model for all of our listed companies. Joan continues to educate other issuers on how to implement best practices within their own company. So thank you, Joan, for being an advocate for every facet of corporate governance and bring your deep knowledge and expertise to the NASDAQ family. From all of us at NASDAQ, we are so proud to recognize you and your achievements over a very, very distinguished career. Congratulations, Joan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm extremely honored to be receiving this award, the Lifetime Achievement Award at Corporate Secretary Magazine. I am deeply grateful for this recognition as prior recipients of this award have motivated and inspired me for many years. As corporate governance professionals, we have faced many unique challenges this year, from virtual annual meetings to virtual board meetings to virtual engagement sessions, just to name a few. I have found each one of these challenges to be an opportunity to elevate corporate governance at NASDAQ and invite you to do the same. Look at these challenges as opportunities. Winning this award would not have been possible without the inspiration I have received from our six NASDAQ CEOs, whom I have had the distinguished pleasure of serving with, Gordon Macklin, Joseph Hardiman, Frank Zarb, Wick Simmons, Bob Greifeld, and our current and most distinguished CEO, Adina Friedman. I've also been inspired by our esteemed and engaging board members for the past 20 years who are maniacally focused on serving our stockholders. And very importantly, my NASDAQ colleagues, whom I have the deepest respect and for whom I have derived wisdom and encouragement for many years. I thank all of you. As we experience the first Virtual Corporate Secretary Award event, following a year of many unprecedented firsts, I toast all of you, corporate governance professionals, for your steadfast commitment to further the best ESG programs for your companies. I encourage all of you to continue to educate, expand, and execute. Educate your directors on emerging ESG issues. Expand your engagement sessions and topics to include inputs from stockholders, stakeholders, communities in which you serve, and your employees. And lastly and importantly, execute. Execute your ESG frameworks and your programs for your companies. Thank you once again for this distinguished award. Thank you for your kind words, Joan, and congratulations once again on such a huge achievement. We've now reached the final set of categories and perhaps the most anticipated of the afternoon. We begin with the awards for Governance Professional of the Year. These have been split by a market cap, and in this category, judges looked for the most exceptional individuals in a governance, compliance, or legal function. Entrants had to show outstanding performance in advancing governance of their company, and in helping the corporation tackle internal and external challenges alike. So the first of these categories is for nominees in the small to mid cap companies. I am pleased to hand over to our awards partner to tell us who's up for nomination and of course, who has won. Hello to all of you that are watching the 2020 Corporate Governance Awards Ceremony. Computershare and Georgeson are proud to sponsor this year's award for Corporate Governance Professional of the Year in the small to mid-market cap category. Congratulations to all the nominees as you're all winners today. The nominees are Adam Kokus from Atlas Air Worldwide, Michael Brown from Clearway Energy, Wendy Cassidy from Nuance Communications, and Elena Kogan from Selecta Biosciences. And the winner is Wendy Cassidy from Nuance Communications. So congratulations to Wendy, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of the ceremony. Thank you. Thank you so much to Corporate Secretary and to the judges for this honor. The past year has been one of the most memorable and challenging years of my career, as I expect it has been for many of you. 
I feel really proud of what I and my colleagues were able to achieve amidst all the chaos and uncertainty. Over the course of my 20 year career, I've advised numerous companies on governance matters. Having the opportunity to bring all of that experience to bear at a company as special as Nuance and to be able to play a role in the company's remarkable transformation in the past year has been really rewarding. Our board, our talented CEO and executive team, my team and all of our employees are aligned around a common purpose and values and a recognition that a transformation of our corporate governance and our relationship and engagement with our shareholders was critical to driving transformation across our business. To my colleagues, my team and all of you, thank you. So staying with the Governance Professional of the Year categories, we're now going to recognize those individuals in large cap companies. And this award is presented by Broadridge. I'm pleased to hand over to Broadridge's President of Corporate Issuer Solutions, Dorothy Flynn, to tell us, of course, the nominees in this category and reveal to us the winner. Please take it away, Dorothy. Good evening. I'm Dorothy Flynn, President of Corporate Issuer Solutions at Broadridge, and I'm thrilled to be announcing the winner of Corporate Secretary Magazine's Governance Professional of the Year in the large cap category. Governance professionals sit at the nexus of the board, the C-suite, and shareholders. They are guardians of the company's interests, responsible for managing complex regulatory requirements, communicating with the board, and creating shareholder value. Good corporate governance speaks to a company's reliability, integrity, and transparency. At Broadridge, we partner with governance teams to enhance shareholder engagement, help mitigate regulatory risk, and keep important communications flowing. We look forward to continuing to work with the industry to support the changing needs of corporate governance. The companies nominated for this category today are all being recognized for their leadership and performance in governance and who continue to set the standards that others will strive to achieve. The nominees are Rosemary Glazer from the American International Group, Derek Windham from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Yafit Kohn from the Travelers Companies, and Beth Sasfai from Verizon Communications. And the winner is Rosemary Glazer from the American International Group. Congratulations, Rosemary. I hope you have some champagne to celebrate your win. Thank you very much to Corporate Secretary for honoring me with this award. I'd like to thank my boss, mentor, and friend, Lucy Fado, Executive Vice President and General Counsel at AIG for being such a strong advocate for me personally and professionally. Lucy and my team co-conspired to nominate me for this award without my knowledge, and I'm still a bit troubled about how well they were able to keep this a secret from me, especially given that they enlisted the support of our external advisors and even AIG's CEO, Brian Dupro. Since I joined AIG three years ago, my team and I have been on a transformation journey that has involved an examination of everything we do and ensuring that we're using best practices wherever possible. Our success in modernizing our corporate governance processes is a testament to the caliber of amazing, talented individuals on my team, including Kristen Prohl, Alana Franco, Samantha Palma, Nicole Azari, Regina Tate, Carl Gomez, Ronnie Marchiando, and many others. It is a reflection of the close collaboration our group has with others within the company, including colleagues in our businesses, HR, and investor relations teams. The team's resilience was tested by the shift to remote working in early March, and no one missed a beat. I am truly blessed to have the support of such dedicated and creative professionals who are unafraid of challenging the status quo and embracing change. I would be remiss if I did not also give a shout out to our external advisors who have tolerated my incessant questions and probing and have given us the benefit of their collective experience and knowledge. And lastly, I want to thank all of you. The corporate governance community is comprised of a network of individuals who go out of their way to help and support each other to ensure mutual success. I wish all of you good health in these challenging times. 
Norma's congratulations to you, Rosemary, and well done to your team for keeping this nomination a secret. What an achievement there too. Maybe there should be a separate award for, uh, you know, the best secret kept to maintain awards excitement of the year. One for next year, guys. For our final two awards of the afternoon, we're going to be recognising the governance team of the year, once more split by market cap. Just putting together a submission for this category is a challenge, and the entries Corporate Secretary received this year really highlighted the sheer amount of excellent work being done in the governance field, let alone the awards entry field. All those on the shortlist, as with the other categories presented tonight, deserve to be incredibly proud of the work and achievements that they've got together in the past year. So we will firstly look at those teams from small to mid-cap organisations. Presenting this award is Marsh & McLennan Companies. So I'm delighted to hand over to their Chief Counsel, Executive Compensation and Governance, and Assistant Corporate Secretary, Tiffany Woolley, to do the honours for this category. I am Tiffany Woolley, Chief Counsel of Executive Compensation and Governance and Assistant Secretary at Marsh & McLennan Companies, the proud sponsor of Governance Team of the Year, Small to Mid-Cap. The nominees are Atlas Air Worldwide, Nuance Communications, Selecta Biosciences, and the winner is Nuance Communications. Congratulations. On behalf of the full Nuance Governance team, thank you so much to Corporate Secretary and to the judges for this honor. Our board, our leadership team, and our employees are so proud of the transformation that Nuance has under undergone in the past year, and we believe that our corporate governance accomplishments have been key to that transformation. With the backing and support of our board, our CEO, our small governance team that included me, our Chief Privacy Officer, Jean Liu, our Corporate Counsel, Justine Ben Sussen, our Chief People Officer, Beth Conway, and her team worked together in the past year to lead an extensive off-season and in-season shareholder outreach campaign articulate and disseminate new company values, completely rewrite our code of conduct, publish the company's first ESG report, create a new trust center on our external website, refresh and rebrand our compliance hotline, overhaul our annual compliance training, and advise the board on its adoption of new corporate governance and executive compensation changes that enhance shareholder rights and further align share executive compensation with company performance. These efforts have been well received by our shareholders and our employees and contributed to dramatic increases in our say on pay approval, our employee engagement survey results, and our stock price. Nuance is committed to continuing to maintain best in class governance, and we view this amazing honor as further validation that we are on the right path. Thank you. That's the second appearance today from Wendy via video link up. Congratulations to you and your team once more. So finally, our last award of the afternoon is for the governance team of the year for a large cap company. For one very last time, I'm gonna hand over virtually to our partner to reveal the much anticipated winner. Good evening. I'm Joe Hall and I'm a partner at Davis Polk and Cornwell. It's my honor this evening to present the award for governance team of the year in the large cap category. And what a year it's been. The nominees are American International Group, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Marsh and McLennan Companies, PepsiCo, and the Allstate Corporation. And the winner is PepsiCo. Thank you so much for this honor. I'm accepting the award on behalf of an incredible team at PepsiCo who work very hard and very passionately in support of our robust ESG reporting. With all the issues facing our world today, and as a global company with our scale and reach, advancing our sustainability and purpose agenda, as well as the integrity and transparency of our data that reflects those actions has never been more important. We take great responsibility in that and hold ourselves to the highest standards. So this means a lot. Thank you. Well, what a great end to the show. Um, it's a shame because at this point, I'd usually be calling on all of the winners to make their way to the stage for a group photo. But of course, as that's not possible this year, and I don't really want to open us all up to the chaos of a kind of mass Zoom gathering at the moment, let's take a moment to recognize and congratulate all of them as they appear on screen. Well done, everyone.
Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the Corporate Governance Awards for another year. A huge and well-deserved congratulations to all of the winners and nominees. And remember that every winner will soon be receiving a box full of gifts from our partners, along with, of course, their well-deserved Corporate Governance Award trophies uh, and a bottle of champagne, lest I forget, from our official champagne partner, Morris Sadali. So keep an eye out for those packages arriving in the mail very shortly. Many thanks once again to all of today's generous partners, without whom this event simply would not have been possible. Thank you too to all of the corporate secretary team who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make sure it all runs without a hitch this afternoon. And a final but by no means lesser thank you to everybody watching for tuning in and participating in all of the fun today. Remember, you can head on over to the networking tab straight after this. There you can meet the nominees and of course today's winners in a, in a quick uh, video conversation. And finally, not forgetting the winner of the best dressed viewer competition, the most keenly contested award of the night. We'll reveal on screen who that is in just a moment. A bottle of champagne will be winging its way to you too. And for me, it's been an absolute pleasure being your host this afternoon. I really hope you're staying safe and well and enjoy the continued networking with a glass of something exciting, of course, in your own home. That could be anything from champagne to just a cup of tea. It's up to you. Anyway, hope you celebrate. I'll see you there in just a second. Have a fantastic evening, everyone, and we hope to see you next year.